an FCC C. So that um, I'll get started. So uh, the summit has two main objectives, and one is to get things uh, moving to actors um, uh, to take action on climate change. Um, it also aims political will for the agreement in 2015. Um, the basic idea of why a summit now, um, well, the Secretary General felt that if um, countries just went to Paris next year to negotiate uh, uh, an agreement, um, they may not come with as ambitious a um, um, uh, and we may not come up with an, a, as an ambitious agreement as uh, we would like to see. By holding the summit a year in advance, um, it helps put the issue of climate change on the international agenda, puts it to the top of the international agenda. This is the first time in five years that leaders around the world will be discussing um, climate change. So. Also now, um, the reason to, uh, <clears throat> to hold the summit now is because uh, this IPCC, the Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change, just came out with um, the latest installments in its fifth assessment report. And from the reports, we see that um, the present path that the world is on now would take us to far greater than a two degrees Celsius um, uh, temperature rise over the century. Uh, many parts of the world, many continents, were, would actually warm faster than that. Um, and to to put us on a more sustainable path that would put us on a path that would limit temperature rise to under two degrees, we need to take action now. Um, and there's also a feeling now that more people get it than they did ever before, even leading up to Copenhagen. More businesses, more uh, community people, and more uh, world leaders sense that this is the time to do something about it. Um, there's also a greater understanding that uh, it's not an issue that you could keep kicking down the road um, forever. In fact, if we had started taking action years ago, it would probably have been at far less cost than it will be now, and even taking action now will be a lot cheaper than taking action later on. So there's also a, a sense now that we have, um, there are a lot of things we can do for climate change. A lot of the technologies now exist. Um, People often thought that, well, we have to wait for some magic technology or some such thing um, to take action. Um, no, we don't have to. We can go ahead with what we have now. Um, there isn't any need to, to wait for any future invention or technology. Um, and there is a need, there is an urgency to act now. We have to act now. And there's a need for leaders to step up and, uh, and show leadership. And that's what the summit affords uh, that kind of opportunity. Um, so basically, um, the summit really is about why it makes sense to take action on climate change. It makes the economic case for action on climate change. So we have the climate science, um, that's a starting point. Um, now it's really about what we do to move forward. And we know already that climate change is happening, it's caused by human activities, it's having an effect on every continent, and that it's already disrupting national economies, um, and it's costing us. Um, uh, we have the solutions, we can use this opportunity to kind of move forward to much uh, better technologies, cleaner technologies, we could leapfrog over um, existing dirtier technologies in much the same fashion that a lot of the world just moved right to cell phones, um, skipping over the wired phone uh, uh, technologies. Um, 
This is a time for all leaders, not just from government. The summit is for leaders from government, but also from business and the finance sectors, and also from civil society. Um, we need everybody in this um, in this to do something about climate change, and everybody has to do their part. Um, if we're going to make a difference for climate change, um, it's not simply uh, activities anchored uh, in government action. It's also uh, all sectors need to be involved, and that's where the Climate Summit comes in. It brings everybody into the picture. Um, so the Summit Day, it's actually a pretty, um, it's a pretty uh, packed day in terms of uh, events. Um, in sessions. Um, it starts off with an opening ceremony. Um, the Secretary General will, will kick things off in the morning. Um, there will be some addresses from civil society in the opening. Um, and uh, then it goes to national announcements and by heads of state and government in plenary sessions. Uh, the Secretary General will hold a press conference um, where he will announce some of the major um, initiatives um, from the day. Uh, there'll be a lunch for the private sector um, that's organized by the UN Global Compact. And then there'll be uh, coalition announcements, um, coalitions of, um, of governments, business, and civil society in a number of key areas, which I'll go into a little more. Um, uh, in the afternoon, as well as uh, thematic sessions that we'll be discussing some of the big issues that uh, concern action on climate change right now. And they will conclude with a, a ceremony with the Secretary General summary of the day's announcements. So I mentioned that there'll be uh, action areas, there's eight of them, and uh, they, will, um, they will be consistent of governments, of countries, and, uh, and business, CEOs will be there, civil society, um, and they're working to scale up uh, a number of initiatives and projects. Some of them exist already, some of them need to go to the next level. Um, where um, in, in terms of size, financing, and so forth. Um, and these are areas that are largely identified by the IPCC report as areas that need um, the greatest attention and the greatest action. And these are the areas which also um, uh, emit some of the, uh, the highest rates of emission um, in the world. Um, so we will uh, expect at the summit announcements on agriculture, climate smart agriculture, where the goal is to provide uh, almost 500 million um, farmers with um, means to reduce their emissions from, from farming. Uh, cities, there'll be mayors um, from several big cities coming to the summit, um, and they will be uh, announcing what they're doing um, and uh, by themselves and collectively in, in a number of initiatives uh, that they'll be undertaking um, to reduce emissions, um, building um, efficient uh, energy efficient cities, uh, and building livable cities. Energy is clearly one of the most important issues in terms of addressing climate change, and renewable energy and uh, energy efficiency are major issues for the summit. Financing is always uh, an important um, element, and financing, um, a number of announcements will be made uh, about new sources of funding, scaled up efforts to finance climate projects, um, funding for the Green Climate Fund um, will be made at the summit. Uh, forest and the issue of deforestation is a, another key issue. Um, and the number of the governments, along with um, uh, corporations and CEOs, will be here to discuss what they're, the steps they're taking. 
um, to reduce deforestation uh, pollutants. Um, these are concern um, short-lived climate pollutants. These are emissions that are, in addition to carbon dioxide, emissions that don't last in the atmosphere as long as carbon dioxide, but are as every bit or even more potent than carbon dioxide. And this could include soot, uh, methane, and a number of other gases, and there's a number of initiatives to reduce that. Um, a number of these actions um, in addressing air pollution um, uh, has the benefit of reducing emissions, greenhouse gas emissions, and it has obvious benefits for our health. Um, and resilience is a, uh, is a critical issue. Um, not only do we have to reduce emissions, but we have to build resilience into our communities and everything we do. Um, we've just uh, seen from the Small Island Developing State Conference in Samoa that resilience is a critical issue for people uh, on the front lines of climate change. And uh, the IPCC report, the second part of it, has uh, said that world over, the world is not ready for climate change uh, right now. And the summit is uh, aiming to build up uh, resilience into uh, actions that need to be taken. Um, also, transportation sector, transport is another um, major source of emissions. Um, there's going to be a number of initiatives that are announced to um, promote uh, energy efficiency within ch um, in transportation, also to move to more uh, energy, um, uh, to lower emitting um, forms of transportation. So these will be the eight issues where a lot of attention will be focused on at the summit, um, and uh, we expect announcements on major initiatives that will be substantial and significant at the summit. So the, uh, we'll also be these from thematic sessions. Um, again, um, these are very high-level policy uh, dialogues. Um, they all uh, cover climate science, the economic case for climate action. Uh, this is a lot different from uh, from what has happened before, where very often um, the stress has been on um, um, just sort of more of an emotional appeal to uh, do something about climate change. This is a rather, um, uh, a, a rather folk um, case for them to make climate action. A lot of critics have always contended that action on climate change is a budget buster. It can't be done. It will, uh, it will um, uh, hurt people's and so forth. But actually. Uh, we see now that we can do both. We can improve people's uh, livelihoods, we could promote prosperity, we could promote well-being, and take care of climate change and the environment. Um, there will also be a thematic session on the co-benefits of climate change, that climate action is good for health, it also is good for livelihoods. Um, and also we'll be hearing from the people who are um, dealing climate change right now, including people in small island developing states, um, and other vulnerable groups, including uh, indigenous peoples and, and women. Um, so those will be the different sessions for the day. Um, from the summit, well, we hope everybody will make it to New York to cover the summit. Um, uh, will anybody can get accreditation. Um, the deadline is this Friday, so there's some uh, you're going to cover it, or if your colleagues um, need to cover it, um, or the uh, assembly week. Uh, we will be uh, promoting the summit through all UN media. Um, we expect about 2,000 um, to be attending this and to General Assembly week. Um, during the Secretary 
general Prince uh, Birdie, but I'll be joined by other or some of the other lead uh, figures, you know, or uh, press conferences throughout the day. Uh, so, I think it's not Oh God. Uh, where, uh, where was that? Uh, so, so just the last uh, four minutes, but uh, or maybe two minutes, three minutes, but we are not listening because it's, you know, it's, it's sometimes we can listen, sometimes we cannot listen. So. Okay. Um, so during the day of the summit, um, we will have um, a whole range of, uh, a whole listing of press conferences. The Secretary General will be holding his press conference, uh, most likely at 11.30 that day, and he'll be accompanied by several of the major figures and uh, the announcements that are being made. There will also be other uh, press conferences by world leaders, um, by uh, uh, the business sector, other people who are making the news that day. All these press conferences will be webcast. You can see them wherever you are. Um, anything you need uh, for coverage that day, photos, TV feeds, will make available. So leading up to the summit, um, we've just concluded um, the DPI NGO uh, conference, which focused on two major issues here. Um, uh, one is um, climate change, and the other is the post-2015 uh, agenda. The post-2015 agenda is, uh, is about what comes after the Millennium Development Goals. And really, um, the NGOs uh, issued a, an outcome document calling for, for, for fast action on both of these tracks. Um, both of the action, uh, actions needed for both of these things um, really help the other out. We need um, sustainable development for climate change, and we need to take action on climate change to make sure that there'll be sustainable development. Also last week, the World Health Organization held a health and climate conference that highlighted the impacts of climate change on uh, people's health and, uh, and examined what we can do to address air pollution, which claims almost 7 million lives a year. Um, the Small Island Developing States Conference is, is going on right now. It, uh, actually concludes um, uh, on Thursday, which is in two hours some other time. Um, and that conference has really brought to uh, light um, what small islands are facing and what small islands are doing about climate change. Um, another um, project that's going on right now, WMO has asked weather presenters um, from another, uh, from a number of countries, to do videos of what a weather forecast might look like in 2050. The first of those was issued today. Um, it's about a weather forecast in Brazil in 2050, um, and you can find that at the uh, WMO website. Um, Civil society is very much gearing up for the summit. Um, there are big plans for the People's Climate March on uh, September 21st here in New York, as well as uh, in other places around the world. Um, several hundred thousand people are expected to take part in the People's Climate March. Um, and there'll be a lot of events in New York during the week of the summit. It'll be Climate Week in New York City, um, and we expect um, we expect many many events um, uh, sponsored by governments, um, uh, businesses, and so forth um, that will uh, elaborate and expand on what happens at the summit itself. These include the Social Good Summit on uh, September 21st and 2nd, and uh, the Equator Initiative will be uh, giving out its um, Equator Prize um, here in, in New York. So that's the summit, um, uh, an overview of what the summit is, what it's about. Um, 
Uh, and if you have questions, um, this is the time. Yes. Uh, well, of course, uh, since, since Rafael is here, uh, so he, he is uh, going to uh, pose the first question. But before that, I don't know, Fernando, do you have anything that you would like to add on your side? Everything was said. OK. Yeah, I think all the background is there for, for all of you for preparations as far as the logistics and also the substance is concerned. I also encourage all of you, if you can, to use the chat function to pose questions. But for now, let me pass the mic on to Rafael, and he's going to pose the first question. And then uh, we can either go to the, to the chat function and see if you have any questions, or what we can do is, is we can actually give the floor to you. And if we do that, maybe let's do it that way then. First we go to Lima, then Mexico, Panama, Port of Spain, and Rio. So we go alphabetically. But Rafael, first the question. Hi, Rafael Napoli from my former newspaper. Imagine the best possible outcome for this summit. What would that look like? Well, the best outcome is um, announcements of big action by everyone coming to the extent that they can. We want to see movement. Um, we want to see climate action that actually raises, that shows that uh, everybody is raising their game um, and that puts everybody in a better position to um, uh, move toward um, a climate agreement in 2015. Um, we'll see the results of that in Lima um, in December this year. Um, that's one element. And the other is that we see, um, we see, uh, uh, statements of uh, raised um, political will um, to um, to tackle climate change and to um, and to present a vision of how they move forward. How are they going to move toward a uh, uh, a trajectory that's sustainable by say 2050 or so? Um, this is important, um, and countries can go a long way in showing us how they're going to be tackling climate change. Yes, sure. um, as part of the uh, having a su successful outcome is uh, the increased ambition demonstrated by leaders in your statements, what they're bringing uh, and uh, demonstrating that they're committed to coming together to reach an agreement uh, on climate change in Paris, uh, which is complemented uh, by um, all of the announcements and the actions uh, and the different initiatives that Dan has uh, mentioned in the presentation. Okay, so we'll give the floor to Lima first, okay? Any questions from Lima? So, yes, we have a question here. We just wrote it, yeah? I see it, but please, go ahead. Okay. So this is from Ms. Klaps from Serbindi. What is the role of indigenous people in the coming climate summit? Any other questions from me while you guys have the floor? Um, it seems we don't have any other questions. Right? OK, fine. Thanks. Can oh. you share the PowerPoint presentation? Yes, we shall do that. OK, thank you. Well. There's two things that should be kept in mind. One is that the General Assembly is holding a <clears throat> high-level meeting on indigenous uh, uh, peoples on, um, that starts the day before the summit and also concludes on the day of the summit. And this is a whole uh, attempt to raise the profile of the issues um, relating to indigenous peoples. Indigenous peoples will be participating in the summit itself Particularly, um, um, their issues will come out in the thematic session on uh, people living on the front lines of climate change. Um, and their voices are um, important, and they'll be given um, the opportunity to help with, with government leaders and, uh, and others uh, in the summit. Um, I think um, that will be the main manifestation of, of how. 
Thanks, uh, thanks, Dan. So we go next uh, to Mexico. Uh, hello, my name is Juan Carlos Villarreal from Latinx Agency, the news agency of the Mexican state. We have uh, many questions for, for you. <laughs> um, uh, we want to know which uh, will, the, will be the, the role of, of Mexico in this summit and uh, the number of uh, head of states you are expecting up. And um, uh, you, you said that this is not a negotiation summit but uh, which is exactly the objective and um, uh, the, the role that Mexico could, uh, could have as, uh, um, an, as a strategic uh, um, player in this, in this summit. Thank you. Yeah, good afternoon. I'm a Latvian from the Mexican newspaper, uh, The Economist and the Economista. I want to know also uh, who are you expecting from Mexico uh, besides the Mexican president uh, Enrique Peña Nieto? Is there going to go the uh, minister of the um, environment or something like that? Or how many people are you expecting from Mexico? Okay, thank you very much. Juan, Fernando? Well, just to start, uh, like we're expecting well over 100 heads of state and government to attend the summit. We think it'll be above that, but we're, that's the number we're, uh, we're looking at. Um, uh, as far as the role of Mexico, I think I'll give that to Fernando. Thanks. Uh, to in terms of the role of Mexico, uh, we see uh, Mexico being represented at the highest, uh, uh, coming at the highest level, uh, including by the president. Um, he's likely as other heads of state and, and government coming to the summit uh, be joined by ministers. Uh, we, um, we expect that um, all governments from the region, including Mexico, will be accompanied by the ministers they, uh, they think are most relevant to, to the issue. Um, Mexico, uh, as other countries, will have uh, a role in giving their national uh, announcements, um, but um, they'll be also involved in, um, in the sessions in the afternoon. Um, so they will also have a, a role presenting uh, together with other leaders coming from governments, business, finance, civil society, uh, presenting some of the initiatives that will be launched at the summit. Um, so you know, we we'll encourage you to look at these announcements, which will also address uh, which countries uh, are engaged and in, and in which form they are being uh, are engaging in, in these uh, initiatives, um, which also include uh, private sector representatives and civil society. So when we uh, when we mention the uh, engagement of Mexico in the afternoon on the uh, action areas, uh, we are referring to both government, private sector, civil society, finance leaders. Um, let, let me ask, uh, based on this, if, if I can, uh, when you say private sector representative, civil society representative, they wouldn't be part of the national delegations, or would they be, or, would, or, or they, they are invited or could be part on a separate sort of uh, basis? Yeah, for um, non government participants, so uh, private sector, either business or finance or civil society, uh, they, are, uh, they have been invited separately. They, they are coming from organizations or companies uh, engaged uh, in these uh, initiatives that will be launched. So those that will be coming, they already have uh, some participation and they are being encouraged to do more within those initiatives as well. And part of their announcement is on, on that. Based on the question from, 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 from Mexico, it seems that there's still a bit of misunderstanding about when, and you guys have stressed this, that this is not a negotiations forum, mm -hmm. but still 
apparently the question is, you know, what objectives? What the, so when we say no negotiations, still, what, what, if you can just once again stress that. Well, <clears throat> one of the goals is to get uh, a universal and ambitious agreement, um, a climate agreement in, in Paris in 2015. Um, but the summit itself is not part of the negotiating process to get there. And it's not intended that countries come to the summit and start negotiating clauses of the potential uh, agreement and, and that sort of thing. What we're looking for, what the Secretary General wants from the summit is that he wants to see countries starting to move, actually actions. Now, this isn't about just, um, you know, trade-offs and you do this or I'll do that. He wants to see what countries intend to do, not what they've done. We know that the world right now is not a way to um, uh, a two-degree uh, world this century. We have to get onto a different pathway, a different trajectory. What is everybody preparing to do uh, once a year? Um, and this is actually an opportunity to turn the negotiations on their head, in a sense, where in a negotiation, um, countries often try to see what the other guy is going to do before they commit to doing something. These negotiations have been going on a long time. Um, and they're very slow and they're very frustrating. Um, and we need to see more. We need to um, see people actually stepping up and taking action. Uh, that's what it's for. It's for leaders to show that they are actually taking the issue uh, on um, and, and that they're prepared to do something for that, for, to do something for it. Uh, thanks, Dan. And as somebody who's worked in the UN for a long time, we know that when such uh, high-level meetings come, of course, every leader wants to actually boast and say something positive that they that they are doing. So there's going to be considerable amount of peer pressure also for, for, for the participants to actually make announcements. But with that, let me then turn it over to, uh, to colleagues in Panama. Uh, the floor is yours. Questions from Panama. Yes. Good afternoon. Uh, I would like to know two, two things. First, if you are going to send us this PowerPoint presentation so I can resubmit to our journalists. They were not able to attend this webinar because there is a, a big discussion at our Senate this, in this moment regarding the future of our of this institu institution that has to do with environment here in Panama. So they were not able to hear. And, that, and my second question has to do with press releases. Are you going to be sending us press releases translated into Spanish language so we can disseminate to, uh, to the media, to local and regional media? Yes, we will. Um, and uh, we will be translating um, all releases. And we send the PowerPoint. Yes. But the PowerPoint is in English. The PowerPoint is in English indeed, but we'll send that, uh, send that to you. But uh, as Dan said, everything else, yes. Um, OK, any more questions? Not from my part. OK, thank you very much. Then we move on to Port of Spain. Colleagues in Port of Spain. Any questions from you? Hey, good afternoon. Yes, um, I actually have three questions. I would like to say. Um, I'm wondering whether there are any plans for discussions about how or what kind of assistance could be provided to energy consuming and energy producing developing countries to transition from that dependence to a uh, climate, more climate friendly option. Should I ask all three together? Okay. Um, number two, um, what are your expectations of Caribbean business and civil society representation at that summit? Uh, I, I imagine government leaders would be there, not speaking of the spectrum of 
bit like of the society. And number three, how do you plan to sustain momentum leading up to Paris 2015? Uh, thank you very much. I think we got all. all I th there was a bit of uh, you know crackling with the with the with the sound, but I think we got the questions. One was about uh, how do you transition, uh, or what are the possibilities, or how assistance to make energy dependent uh, uh, countries transition into a more uh, sort of uh, uh, less dependent and more climate friendly. Uh, uh, economy development. The other was about expectations as, as regards civil society particip participation. And uh, what was the third? So, yeah, how, do, how do we sustain momentum uh, uh, until the, the, the Paris summit? Do, did I get this right? Can I just clarify one and two, please? Yes, please go ahead. OK, number one, um, particularly developing countries, high energy producing and consuming developing countries, would there be any discussions about how assistance could be provided for them to transition that is at the summit? And number two, um, what are your expectations of business and civil society representation from the Caribbean in particular? Okay, so from the Caribbean in particular, okay. So, is it clear? All right, well, let me, I don't know if you have anything to add. Um, um, financing, um, um, and climate financing is, is a major issue for the summit, and we're looking to mobilize um, financing from public and private sources um, for um, climate action. Um, the um, several governments um, will be making announcements on uh, their contributions to the Green Climate Fund at the summit. Um, and those, some of those, um, that money is ultimately um, should make its way for um, for energy um, for energy projects. Um, in addition, a lot of the climate financing um, um, that's to be generated is precisely um, for. Uh, in countries, developing countries, make the transition to a low carbon economy. Um, a, a number of things uh, include um, uh, development banks um, and uh, other financial mechanisms that are trying to work with countries to make it possible that in, in, uh, is into um, projects in that will help them move in that direction. Uh, expectations of civil society. Um, well, we've been working with um, civil society groups in preparations for the summit um, now for some time. And I mean, we could say that civil society is very, um, is very enthusiastic about the summit. And in terms of, uh, um, they see the summit as a major moment to generate um, support and to generate enthusiasm and momentum for action on climate change and momentum toward a uh, global agreement in 2015. The People's Climate March is a major um, uh, civil society's part. Square here in New York, and they'll also be organizing a lot of things elsewhere in, in for around the world. Um, business, um, as both business and civil society are playing very key roles um, during the summit. Now, this is uh, this is different. They do participate. Both groups participate in the UNFCCC. Um, uh, uh, climate conferences, but their level of participation and their level of integration into what's happening in the summit is probably the greatest for anything that's ever happened um, here at the UN in terms of their joining uh, these coalitions of actors that are that will be doing things, doing specific projects and initiatives. Um, and I think for a lot of um, these uh, businesses where uh, there will be quite a number of CEOs attending. 
Um, the expectations um, of the summit are quite high, um, and there's also a feeling that the summit plays a very important role in generating that momentum going forward. Um, sustaining the momentum, we have a third question after the summit. Um, well, the summit. Um, the summit will lead us to the next stop, which is Lima uh, in December, where countries have said that they would um, uh, reach a, a zero draft of the uh, agreement that will be um, in Paris. Um, what summit will be closely watched. People will be looking at who's announcing what, and people will be holding anybody uh, accountable for the for the announcements that they make at the summit. This will be uh, a major. Um, we expect that to be a major uh, uh, point at, at the Lima Climate Conference. Um, there are negotiations that go on uh, before. In, uh, bond in October, um, and uh, and then through the year um, next year, there's a number of very important steps to uh, to reach Paris, including the announcement of um, of, uh, of of some major countries. Um, what exactly um, the targets that they're going to set forward. Um, some countries, um, such as uh, the European Union, said that they would put their, uh, make their commitment known um, in October. Um, but we expect uh, 2015 to be full of um, events where we see how things unfold toward the, uh, toward the climate, uh, toward the agreement in, in Paris. At the same time, we have the um, activity on the post-2015 uh, issue where countries are expected to adopt sustainable developments. Um, a lot of the activity that surrounds that will also feed into the climate, uh, um, uh, the, the push for a climate agreement. Um, and so um, the summit is, in a sense, a kickoff point um, where we think where it will spark a lot of action and then spark a lot of momentum as we go forward. Uh, thank you. Uh, before uh, we give the floor to, uh, to Rio, a big thanks to um, Juan Miguel and colleagues in Mexico for uh, offering to actually uh, make a Spanish version of the PowerPoint presentation. Thank you very much for, for that, General Sapa. And now the floor uh, goes to uh, the mic or the sound, the audio uh, goes to Yuri Rio. Thank you very much. Just to very quickly clarify, 
uh, Mr. Thomas, Dan Thomas is not here. Uh, he was originally supposed to be uh, here. Uh, uh, Dan Shepard is here. And as I said, it's, uh, it's uh, Fernando Castellanos, who is from the, the, uh, the, the Secretary General's climate change team here. Dan Thomas is also from the climate change team of the SG, but this time he couldn't make it. So Fernando is representing the SG's climate change team. So with that, let me pass on the floor to either Fernando or Dan to take the uh, few questions or any of those. Yes, so um, well, we expect uh, countries like, um, as, uh, as Dan mentioned, uh, well over 100 uh, leaders, heads of state and government coming uh, to the summit. We have confirmation from leaders across all regions of, of the world, I mean, coming from Europe, Asia, uh, Latin America, Caribbean, Africa. So we have representation from all, all regions and major countries uh, coming, including major countries in the Latin American and Caribbean uh, region. Um, and in, in this, um, along these same lines, uh, we, we are encouraging all countries, all leaders to come with, uh, with world announcements. That's uh, what the Secretary General has been asking uh, all, all countries. Um, and along these lines, uh, you know, this is the same to, to every single country. Come to the, to the summit, uh, you know, to, to say what your country um, is doing, what it will uh, continue to be doing, and, you know, we will be uh, getting this uh, urge to uh, increase their ambition on what they are doing to, uh, and to come to, uh, to Paris uh, ready to, to reach an, an agreement, uh, well, not only come to Paris, but engage throughout the next 18 months to, to get to Paris with, uh, with, with agreement uh, ready to, to be uh, reached. Um, Brazil, as uh, several other countries, is, uh, is critical. Uh, it is an emerging economy, very relevant uh, in terms of, of emissions and sinks of greenhouse gases. Um, and uh, as many other countries, it is a country that is doing uh, quite quite a lot. It, it has uh, done a lot in several areas, including especially some of the areas that um, will be uh, part of the um, of the discussion at the summit, or part of the announcements at the summit, Brazil is uh, doing a lot in terms of uh, forestry, in cities, in energy, uh, in renewables. Um, so it is critical to have countries, uh, not only Brazil, but uh, all emerging economies and all countries, also in small, medium-sized countries, to come and say what they're doing, to, to engage and say what they can do more, uh, and, and just um, you know, be, be ready to to increase the action on, on the ground uh, with urgency. Um, and along these lines, um, we, we, the hope is that all countries in, engage in, in initiatives um, um, that will be launched um, and hoping that um, they engage with private sector, with civil society, with all the other stakeholders that are key uh, to delivering that action on, on the ground. And it is not just uh, the one of one group or the other, whether it's civil society, private sector, or, or, or the government. Um, I, didn't quite get the last question at climate pollutants. <clears throat> On um, the short-lived climate pollutants, um, that has to do with um, uh, various pollutants that um, are emitted other than carbon dioxide. They often um, don't last quite as long in the atmosphere as carbon dioxide, but uh, are very 
very potent greenhouse gases um, and other types of pollutants, and this includes soot, uh, methane emissions, um, and some of the ideas through initiatives that we expect announcements on at the summit um, relate to um, uh, initiatives that like uh, curb um, uh, gas flaring at oil sites, oil production um, wells, and um, and other um, and other uh, initiatives that reduce soot and other air pollution uh, sources. Thank you. Uh, based on the questions, we, we of course understand that all of you would like to know exactly who's coming, who's going to be there, who's speaking when, and I'm sure that once we have a firm agenda with the participant, uh, the moment that is shareable, uh, we will of course send it to our colleagues at the Unix and they then will of course pass it on, uh, on to you. Uh, if I may just uh, clarify something with you, Fernando. I need to understand that basically the Secretary General didn't give any straitjacketing or any guidance as far as what member states are expected to announce. They can announce whatever they want or they should actually stick to those thematic areas or key areas, not even that. They can come with whatever issues they think is important for them. Uh, yes, the, the Secretary General has not given a straitjacket as, as you mentioned to to leaders, he's happy to come with bold announcements uh, on climate action, on increased ambition on, on climate action, and um, uh, he's seeking their, uh, their commitment to reach an agreement uh, in 2015 for, for leaders to come and express that, that they uh, are willing to, to engage with other countries constructively, uh, but it is up to, uh, to countries to uh, to decide what to announce, what they're doing, or what they want to do, uh, recognizing that uh, every country is different. They, uh, every country has different national circumstances, and different needs, and different capabilities. And within that, they, they do a lot uh, in general our country. So. Okay. okay, so any other questions from the floor? I think Mexico has something, so Mexico, the floor is yours. Oh, okay, so you may just want the complete name uh, and position of, uh, of uh, Fernando. So it's Fernando Castellanos, and he's a liaison officer in the Secretary General's Climate Change Team. Okay, that is Fernando's name and title. Uh, question anybody else? And then, well, it's Dan Shepard, uh, and Dan Shepard is a public information officer uh, in the Department of Public Information, uh, and he is the DEI focal point on climate change. So he is the climate change expert within the Department of Public Information. Sorry, any questions from any anybody? Kind of like last call. Brazil, Brazil, please. Uh, you may know Brazil is investing in nuclear power. And my question is, do you see atomic power as climate friendly and as a solution for climate change? Thank you. There are a lot of um, there are a lot of issues that have to be resolved by countries, and the UN doesn't tell countries what to do, what energies to pursue. Um, it doesn't prescribe that um, that kind of action. A number of countries have found um, that they like climate, uh, nuclear power. Others are trying their best to get rid of it. Um, uh, the bottom line is, is that all of these uh, various energy sources, they have their costs, they have their benefits, and countries should take all of these factors into account when they decide on the best course of action. Um, and the bottom line is, is that uh, whatever uh, energy sources they uh, pursue, uh, they should be, uh, they should be uh, low emissions uh, forms of energy. Thanks, Dan. Uh, Lima has a question. Mm, yes. Um, 
I will keep the summit both for presentation and financing, and financing and intended national determined contributions for Lima Quad Bank. For a community? CIP. Okay. Uh, we have one more. Uh, let's, let's, we're, we're running to the end here, so. Okay. Thanks. Okay. Um, ambition um, um, and for, for financing. Well, a lot of, um, we have a lot of business and a lot of financial um, uh, representation at the summit. And there's a big sector of um, investors that will be present and that believes in um, in in putting more uh, money and more investments into climate uh, into climate uh, projects, um, and we expect some of these announcements to be made um, at the summit. The summit will probably be a critical um, uh, having them. Uh, what they're going to do uh, going forward. So a uh, number of people who will be discussing um, and, and pledging to do things to put a price on um, carbon, putting a price on the emissions um, that, uh, that actually follows along the lines of the polluter pays principle. Um, and there'll be um, uh, discussions also coming from some quarters on on how to reduce uh, the level of investments in fossil fuels. But these are just a number of issues that will be um, uh, that will come up. A lot of people will be announcing things in one way or another on a lot of these things. But the summit is the place where a lot, all of these announcements will be made. Um, so. The summit is kind of a, playing a critical part in, in coalescing um, all these actions um, that will lead to a low carbon economy, promote cleaner energy, and um, ultimately put us um, somewhere nearer to a, a trajectory we could all live with. Last question goes to Brazil. Thank you. Well, as I said, because it's not a negotiation, the entire summit is not a negotiation, the only outcome document will be the Secretary General's chairman summary that he issues at the end of the day, which will basically reflect the announcements made during the day. During the day, um, there will be um, there will be uh, agreements reached or declarations signed by various actors or action groups that reflect the course of action. There might be um, something from mayors, something from other uh, action uh, on on resilience. Um, there might be. Um, there might be declarations signed, memorandums of understanding, but um, they reflect certain initiatives or projects, but overall, the outcome document is the Secretary General's um, the chairman summary. Thank you very much. Uh, I see one question still from Lima about how to connect with the social media team of the summit. We'll give you the details on that uh, because I know colleagues from the API, the social media team, Nancy Gordon, and, 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 and colleagues will be working right uh, on, on social media as well. It's all um, follow hashtag um, climate2014. Great. Thank you very much to all of you, to colleagues in Mexico. Uh, Panama, Port of Spain, and, and Rio, thank you very much. Uh, and also to the invited the representatives of the media, thank you very much for being there for your interest. Uh, and uh, good luck with your, with your work and coverage. Uh, and also, of course, huge thanks uh, to, to Fernando and to Dan for being here and uh, uh, giving you the briefing, taking your questions. 
uh, and from all of us here, thank you again. Uh, have a wonderful afternoon. Uh, bye.